Um, good morning. Uh, um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone here, and thank you for coming to this keynote. I'm 30 years gay. I spell my name this way, usually with the street pronounced in Mandarin Chinese as, san, as insanity, making it, making it a stunt USK. Some of you may have, some of you may have known my name already, but I, I'm not as active as before. As of the, one of the charter members, today I would like to talk about the history of TCON in, in past three years and what we learned from it. Due to time constraints, I won't be able to cover every details here, and I will lean towards our technical background, so apologize for that. Today's keynote will be joined by USTC ZZZZ. You can call him, you can call me for Z. Uh, another charter member who is in charge of a lot of things. I am the person called for Z by 3T USK. What I'm ready to talk about today is related to part of the technical things of TCOM, such as our infrastructure and several models which have already been publicly available. So without further ado, let's get it started. What is TCOM after all? A quick summary is, it's a blend of ModGM and BTM styled online convention. Only speaking, it's as an oversimplified definition, but it serves its purpose. We'd like, to We'd like to see models develop mods in given time interval and use a booth to show off their work, then let judges and the players to read them. Everything starts from a dream. I was in BTM 16, 16.2, Pico BTM and BTM Moo. Only missed the very first BTM, BTM 15. This event deeply impressed me, but, uh, but, it left, uh, but it left one single question in my mind. Can we have something similar in the Chinese speaking community? I, wa I once believed the answer was no. The problem is, while well, there are surely a lot of players, only a few of them, only a few of them are models to make a situation worse. These models typically have a lot of matter to deal with in their, in their real life. Many of them are students and have to prioritize the exams. Some of them have jobs to do and bills to pay and thus little to, little to no time to spare. Here's an extreme example. Back in 2015, MCPBS, one of the largest Chinese language Minecraft communities, organized a mod jam event. Guess what? There was no submissions. Technically, there was one submission, but it was ineligible because it had been published in 2014. As a result, in the next couple of years, I always believe that we did not have enough people to make it possible. Situation improved in 2018 when another group tried the same. This time, it was NetEase, the company behind the localized Minecraft China. This time we got, we did get a lot of developers, but spawned, but it also spawned a lot of controversies. This event is not mod centric either. They also had competitions for maps, resource packs, and bedrock add-ons, so it was not ideal to me either. Speaking of bedrocks, one thing worth noting is that we do have many people prefer playing on mobile devices than PCs or laptops. This adds one more uncertainty. Other than that. I was not aware of other attempts in the Chinese speaking scene. TCOM was born in the May of 2020 when everyone was sitting all in front of screen because of the pandemic. Someone brought up the uh, someone brought up the mod jam, the topic of mod jam again in a chit chat. While well, I was about to refute this idea, I was I suddenly realized that. It was, it's not impossible anymore. So let's make it happen, I thought. Item number one, a name. I spent a day to think, a no, think about a name and chose Cha Hui, means tea talk in Chinese. Then I added a mod and a dev before it. Then we got this full name, Mozu Kefa Cha Hui. 
So it is. To make it even shorter, I picked TCon as our English name, which is just a T and a convention mixed together. Now it's like uh, twenty five per. Now it's like twenty five percent down. I bought a domain and then invited some well known people to the to be the charter members. But before I actually announce it, there has been there had been one more thing to do. We need to know how the community thought about it. So we did a survey. Some status some statistics are shared here today. We got. 792 answers. First observation is that for every 10 answers, 6 would say that they would just be audiences, 2 would say that they wanted to make mods, 1 would say they wanted to be judges, and another one would say that would say they are not and they can't do anything. Second, there are many people realized what we were, what we were trying to do and gave us the best wishes. Some people even really point to BTM. Oh wow. Oh wow. Next, there are also criticisms. One notable criticism I still remember today is that we should extend our event to half a, half a year or even a full year because mods require time to polish. Otherwise, it would be just full of this reborn or that rebirth or even just a trash mods, which is just simply not worth the effort. Then we have this, we have, we have this Russian preferences. The que this question allowed multiple choices, so we get this result. 73.1% of all answers say they want 1.12.2. Half of the answers say 115.2, the latest at that time. 28.1% says 144.4, and 25.2% says 1.7.10. Uh, should I do it a few years earlier? I would have expected 73.1 percent says uh, 117 instead. Last but not least, on the issue of piracy, it's almost a half-half split. I won't go deep this because of time, but hopefully in the future. Um, I will just continue. With all the slides, uh, with, with the survey data ready, we could finally kick off our first iteration, TCON 2020. We decided on, we decided on 115.2 and Forge. Fabric had already been a thing at the time, but uh, most of our team members were not familiar with, with, it, with it, except me. So we sticked with Forge to accompany, accompany this. I mean, accompany this. As for example, as for theme, we initially gave two optional themes, T and Summer. One matched our name and one matched other one matched the time. But we end up with lots of mods trying to fit the theme, including a mod, including a mod, um, including a, sorry, in sorry, including a mod adding tea leaves, tea leaves powered machines. Schedule wise, since we only had a one month and a, a little bit more to prepare, the schedule was a bit chaotic. Many deadlines were mixed together. But a skeleton is still used today, on which device uh, you went into five stages. Um, and they are opening, building, exhibition, closing, and shutdown. 
It would give about two months to develop a mod and one month to build booths, then open the public server for about two weeks, announce the results, and keep the server running for another month on for anyone who cannot make it on time. Opening and closing, closing have their own have their own ceremony. We may invite a guest. Okay, now it's my introduce our instructor at that time. Give our natures we need the special con. So I believe we were uh this slide is this slide is where we stopped. So <clears throat> let's start on the eleventh. Uh, so that's that's a that's a quick intro for the for the TCon 2020 and uh, our schedule. Schedule runs like this, and uh, here we go for the yotter. Okay, now could you all audience hear me? It's my time to introduce our infrastructure yes. at that time. Okay, let's continue. It's my time to introduce our infrastructure at TCon 2020. Given our natures, we need specialized mods to do specialized tasks. In TCon 2020, we have created several mods such as the slideshow which is a mod that displays web images, and error control, which is a plot management mod, Chrome Ball, which is a meme mod making my most commonly used avatar into a droppable item that players can throw away everywhere in game, Nickname, which is a mod to allow you to change your display name in game. This was later abandoned because it caused the confusion and management burden. Simple permission, which provides a permission management system on top of the Forge permission API. This was later replaced with lock perms because lock perms does it just right. All of them can be found in our GitHub organization. They are currently not available on either CurseForge or Modrins, however. Let's get to the topic of issues we faced. One of the major issues, one of the major issues we faced in TCon 2020 was that we wasted a lot of time manually doing things. Even the website was 100% written HTML, the mod list had to be manually updated. Not to mention that we need to build mods on our own. This was a time-consuming process. Fortunately, we only had around 20 submissions at that time. All and all together, we started our quest of automation since 2021. We'll dive into it later. Another issue, another issue we, another issue we had, another issue was that our exhibition server got attacked. We spent like two days to confirm it was an attack, which utilized a zero-day vulnerability from the one probe. Pretty short. The one probe had a network packet which server would get data at. The, at the, desk, at the requested look position and return them to the client. The one, pro the one probe did not check if the position was in loaded area or not. You can see what could happen next. The result, server, tr server TPS tracked below threshold, letting the watchdog kill the server. Um, tons of chunks were created. Our saves exploded into 10 gigabytes each uncompressed. We spent another day to deploy the fix, contact MCJT to pro Privately to get the to get fixed upstream and run a quick post mortem. Till today, we still don't know why it was worth in a, using a ZOD a ZOD vulnerability to attack our server. But the waiting for server, the placeholder text used by the one problem became an insider joke since then. Last but not least, on the issue of award and awards and voting. We only had a dedicated judge team at the time, and it turned out it turned out that it was implemented very poorly. Many judges gave their result give the result late, and there and and somewhat unprofessional, 
and uh, some of them are some some results are lack of professionalism. I have to say, not only that, but also some some words are simply impract some words were simply impractical. Those words never came back. Wu Ting was also Wu Ting was collected in a spreadsheet and counted manually. Well, I did use some functions to speed it up, but uh, everything is still um, by hand, largely. All in all, led to a fatal calculation error left unnoticed until until the closing closing ceremony when I announced when I announced the announced the result. Consequently, the voting process was reformed in two thousand twenty one, which will I will dis- we will discuss later, briefly. So these are all all we have for TCon two thousand twenty two. I'm sorry, two thousand TCon two thousand twenty. Preparation for TCon 2021 actually started in December of 2020, three months later after the TCon 2020 closing ceremony in September. After a few meeting sessions, we decided that we would use the 116.5 and the Forge. The opening ceremony was pinned on May the 1st. More development cuts between July and August, and the closing ceremony was pinned at the a date before everyone returning to school. We decided that we would use a mandatory topic. We would give a lengthy prompt to explain the topic, hoping that this can help participants to think about what to do. The topic of TCon 2021 was a bit lengthy, but in a nutshell, it was small fictitious gadgets. We ended up with some rather big things though. We also decided to introduce an example mod. Put in this way, if TCon ourselves is also a participating team of TCon, then this example mod is what we will do. Not only it helps explaining our theme, but it also serves as a starting point for other models. One, is- one of the new issues we had in 2021 was eligibility. We required mods to be developed in a given time window since the beginning, as we have, as we are large- we are still largely a hackathon, but there are. There were an increasing number of models who would like to take this opportunity to share their works. Also, mods from TCon 2020 would like a return. We'd like to see them return as well. Adding them together, we start to have this concept called show of out of kindliness. Mods under this category are not eligible for awards unless they appeared in past TCon sessions at least once. Now we are hitting the tech stack. Earlier I mentioned that manually doing things wasted a lot of time. To address this, we start to write a lot of things. I will hand the microphone to ZZZZ. Hello, it's your turn. Oh, sorry, 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 I forgot to open the voice. The earliest and the most urgent need was a sign-up portal, which was also the first completed and deployed in the newly added infrastructure of TCON 2021. It's called Bi Chun. The name comes from a type of green tea. It was initially written in Python using Flask, later written in Go, a programming language officially maintained by Google. It uses Microsoft OAuth. We thought that we could then check if you have purchased the Minecraft Java edition, but Moya started account migration only after TCon 2021 closing ceremony. Bring Moya, I guess. It has a RESTful API. We were also RESTful too, because we got everything needed from API.
Second thing, an automatic way to build submitted mode from source. This system is called Longjing, and yes, it is another type of green tea. It uses GitHub action to build mode, so it is on GitHub. You see, link provided. This system is deeply integrated with Bi Luochun, our signing up system introduced on the previous slide, and it has several duties besides continuous integration. First, it PGP signs mods. The signature would be used by another thing. Well, we will get there very quickly. Second, it does some automatic check. It will spawn a dedicated server with your mod installed to see if the server can start. It checks if your mod ID is still an example mod, which happened multiple times since there has already there has always been someone forgetting to modify a build.gradle file, as you all know. Third thing, a place to collect extra resources and data. We officially name it Packed User Exhibition Resources, or PUER, P-U-E-R for short. PUER is a type of dark tea. It is on GitHub too, so link provided here. Previously, P-U-E-R was also responsible for assembling server mode pack, but that was moved to a dedicated service in 2023, aka this year. Another issue we had in 2020 was server crashes. Well, we do anticipate server crashes. We, however, do, did not want crashes to delay boosting building. To this end, we introduced the concept of mod promotion. It worked in this way. First, Longjing would build all mods. These mods would enter the first stage called test. The test, stage the test stage includes a server, a sandbox server where words are reset on each restart. We give this playground to modders to test out our to test out their mods before moving to the next stage. The next stage is called build or sometimes prod. This is this is a, this is a boost building server and should have much less crashes. In 2022, we added one more stage called exhibition. This stage contains one or more replicas of the build. This protects the build from accidental accident from accidents or deliberate vandalism. Let's talk about our infrastructure modes. In TCon 2021, they also had new members. First is Remote Sync, a mode updater based on FML. Every time the game starts, it will fetch the latest mod list, download the mod, download the PGP signature by Longjing, check the signature, and finally pass the mod to FML. While it certainly fulfilled its purpose, it also caused a lot of new issues. Because of these new issues, we dropped the remote sync and started using PackWiz this year. Everyone listening here might be familiar with PackWiz already. Then we have Vote Me, which allows players to vote for their favorite mods in Minecraft. It is powered by Redis and is data driven. Also, Sign Me Up, an in game travel guide, tells you where are all the booths. It is not a minimap mod because it doesn't really include a minimap, but many players think it should. Last but not least, we have Io, our custom world generation. This is how IO works. It generates an IO with all biomes on it. Outside of the IO is an endless sea. Since biome distribution is random, we would try multiple times to actually find the seed with all biomes needed. In fact, it may take hundreds of times. Now getting, now getting to new issues. We also used some third-party mods, but sometimes they can break. This time we had a broken word edit. All commands from word edit would stop working after running the reload command, and we used the reload command a lot. 
Usually we could fix the, we, f we could fix the issues on our own, like what we did back in 2020 for the one problem. But what I did was a special case. Its project structure was way too complex. Of course, if what I did had still been maintaining its 1.16.5 version, we wouldn't have needed to care much less, care much, care much about it. We ended up with restarting server every time we need to run reload command. So, do. Another issue was the careless entity selectors. Combining with the kill command, one could cause catastrophic damage to the booth building server. This caused several, several, several save rollbacks. To minimize the impact, we had a tool to extract only uh, just entity data from a chunk data and merge them into, into the broken save, so we could do a partial rollback. But the issue was still not resolved until this year. We will get back later. Fortunately, since later versions of Minecraft store their entity data in a separate directo directory, partial rollbacks have been much easier since then. Oh, also, avoid NBD selectors at all costs. Sorry for a lot of ways. There are, these are major takeaways from TCON 2021. Next, TCON 2022. Sorry, preparation started in early 2022. We continued to use the latest versions at that time, which was 1.18.1, the, then later 1.18.2, and we were still on Forge. The theme, which can also be called Topic, for 2022 was fire. Clearly, there, was the influ there were influences of Elden Ring, but in reality, we, we had a lot of mods mixed into the vanilla furnaces. As a comparison, only two or three mods in TCON 2021 uses use the mixing exclu excluding infrastructure mods. We still run on the May to the August schedule. We continued off we continued offer to offer an example mod for reference. This time candle fire. It adds a it added a candle. This candle shoot player in shoots players into the sky. Falling damage is avoided, so we use this as a transportation tool. This is how it looks like. In addition to the example mod, we also made a modding tutorial. It's called Zhengshan Xiaozhong, and it's a type of black tea. This tutorial is intended for anyone who like to join but had no modding experience before. It is, it is designed in this way. Copy this and copy that and then it should work. Well, maybe it, sh wor it worked as, as, as expected. We still like a feedback on this one. Then we, ha then we hit by this unthinkable issue. The opening ceremony was flooded with more than 200 players. For comparison, the last time we had more than 100 players was when we opened the activation server in 2021. All other times, we only had peaks at around 60 to 80, and for regular times, it's significantly less. It's, it's significantly less. This was how it looked at at the, at the stage at that time. Literally not enough, literally not enough seats. The server was killed by Watchdog after about four or five minutes. It was worth. It is worth noting that we could not find a screenshot that does that literally does say more than two hundred. Only this one with um one hundred ninety players. Pretty close though. So after the opening ceremony, we quickly start. We quickly started the post mortem. The key question was, how could we handle this many players? We happened to have the author of ArcLight, a a, a forge bucket server hybrid, in our advisor team. He proposed a solution based on the based on setting up replicas. First, we would have four servers. Each one of them is a copy of a build server. All four servers would run on ArcLight and put behind the lightfall, a fork of waterfall that adds a proper forge support. It requires, 
it requires a client mode to, uh, to actually proper working, to actually proper works though. Then on Lightfall, we, had a, we have an algorithm to distribute the players evenly among replicas. Finally, with a mode called Phantom, all players can see each other from different replicas. The majority of staff members voted in favor of this setup, so it was adopted. We also decided to switch from screen, com screen command to use to Docker Compose to run servers. It serves as a primitive way to do replica orchestration and it provides some level of sandboxing. However, it was later revealed that we still had to use a lot of ad hoc bash scripts. As for other infrastructure mods, this year we had, we had a three year. Sorry, this year we had three new mods, Power Tool, Axley Deco, and Xibao. Power Tool is just a toolkit of useful things. For example, item display, text display, a command block that repeatedly does things on its own in given interval, an infinite power source, decoration safe hopper, vanilla hoppers, and uh, much more. As for Axley Deco, it's a decoration mod originally created by XEKR, a textual artist and resource pack creator. We commissioned to port this mode away from MC Creator. As for Xibao, it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky to explain, but it uh, does this. It changes the background of the disconnection screen. This texture is a meme. The word Xibao roughly means good news in good news in Chinese, but this template is often used to express bad news or trivial matter instead. In TCOM 2022, we later changed this texture to a blue screen to, of death via resource pack. We also added some instructions on what you can do when disconnected. Back in TCOM 2021, there was a mod adding trading cards and a, co and a accompanying collection book. The author said the mod also Said the author of side mode also organized an unofficial card collecting activity. Inspired by this, we rolled out we rolled out our unofficial collection event in TCON 2022. We had 34 fire themed items to collect. It clearly had the influence from Dark Soul. As for result, we found that most items were easy to find, but still some items were a bit obscure to find. Some were gated behind mini games, but those games were tricky. We also had to learn that it costs it costs a lot of time to organize such an event. We will need to plan ahead if we want it next time. Speaking of mini games, TCON 2022 had more mini games than 2021 or 2020. This led to this to the issue of quote. Cheating quote. The reason I use quote is that the situation is more like unexpected mod inter interactions instead. In short, there are mods offering flying capability, and there are more there are games such as parkour. Adding them together means that you could not complete the game in an un unintended way. We're still in trial and fail stage on this issue. We had made area control capable of prohibiting the possession of certain items in certain areas. And we requested the models to notify us if they are adding alternative transportation methods. We will continue to explore alternative solutions. And a classic issue, shaders. So there are many people who would like to do a recorded tour and share the videos. Among those people, the majority of them want shaders. The issue was not that outstanding because more, not many models were dealing with rendering at that in the past. We all know that it can be very daunting when it comes to conflicts with shaders, especially OpenDefine. Not to mention that we are still on Forge, which means that we on we'd only have Oculus, not the original Iris. For now, all we could do is to provide help as much as we can, though oftentimes very limited. I wish one day we could have a practical guide on how to, how to be compatible with shaders, but uh, that's still a far-fetched goal. With all, past with all past experiences, 
We managed to hold our barely hold our ground and host our fourth iteration event this year, TCON 223. Yes, it is still ongoing right now. Right now, we have passed the more development deadline, which is on uh, which was on August the second, and there are people working on the booth building server at this very moment. I guess. Our exhibition server will open to public on September 20th, about one week before, before Zhongqiujie or the Mid-Autumn Festival. This year we had a lot of extraordinary situations. First, when we held our first planning meeting back in January, we decided to use 1.19.4, but the Muyang, re Muyang released 120 early June. We had no choice but to follow, which means all the mods had to be updated. Second, about a month after the opening ceremony, New Forge was born out of Forge. This time, we are simply too late to move. We do not want to cause more confusion to all participants. This year's topic is Rena, meaning lively, vibrant, or liveliness. The example model we have this year is, is a long boat with Ender Dragon head on it instead. The, reaction, the reason is that our opening ceremony was close to Duan Wu Jie, also known as the Dragon Boat Festival. Uh, tradition, it's a traditional Chinese holiday. The slide contains a banner created by banner art created by Yuli the Mao. We have a revamped, we have we had a revamped team structure this year. Previously, we don't, we didn't really have a formalized team structure. We only had some convention. We only have had some conventions. For example, my I might be assigned for mod development or server operation, but never for chat room moderation. This year, we pretty much just cement these these conventions by creating different different task forces. Different task forces have different duties, and they don't need to worry about each other. Well, in practice, sometimes we still need collaboration among different teams. We might need to review this setup in future too. We also had a major overhaul of our server architecture this year. We introduced a lot of new components, including without limit to drone.io, Kubernetes, Grafana, Prometheus, and so on. This diagram demonstrates how complex the architecture is. It consists of many parts, in addition to Longjing, Bi Chun, and Pu er, introduced in TCOM 2021. It also includes an image, image packaging service, a packwise based mod pack manifest generation service, a download service for mod dependencies, and multiple ports running Minecraft servers, which are managed by Kubernetes. Besides, it contains a Redis server, a PostgreSQL server, a system based on Prometheus for collecting matrices, and a log collection and analysis system based on FluentBeat and Grafana Loki. All with a single objective, easy automatic server scaling and monitoring. Honestly, this diagram is too complicated and we may need some time to make it easier to understand. <laughs> As for Grafana, we use it to monitor server data such as milliseconds per tick and online player count with server logs and even sign up stats. This Grafana screenshot shows that how many players stayed on one replica and it takes average 5.8 milliseconds to perform a tick. We also expand our mode promotion track to five stages. It's pretty much the same as before because the two new stages, dev and stage, uh, don't have many jobs attached to them for now. Unlike 2021 or 2022, this year we carefully selected a void as our terrain. This is more attempt to see if we can solve issues with the natural terrain. Since we are still building the booths, we'll see how it ends up. If 
infrastructure modes are still growing. Our plot management mode error control is now capable of stopping road selectors from targeting innocent entities. With an additional mode command confirm, we should be able to keep out the road Q at E command once and for all. Check me in is a mod to guide players visiting booths by using check-in points. It was finished a few weeks ago, so more details will come later. Gongdao Bay is responsible for service discovery and load balancing. It has two parts, one forge mod and a bungee cord plugin. We also have the Zprof mod to bridge the Minecraft servers and Kubernetes. We have filtered out many common crashes by various automated checks, but it seems like crashes are also evolving. This year, we saw a spike in crashes related to bad network packets. These bugs are hard to figure out, and we usually resort to binary search to locate them. We'll see if we can somehow automat automatically check these kind of issues. Last but not least, this year we set up a knowledge base to collect our documents. Previously, it was scattered, scattered all over the places without, cl without clear indexing. With this knowledge base, we can do a lot of things, such as hosting our created FAQ, uh, the documentation of our mods, how to do this and how to do that. We can also op directly open some documents to public, which improves our transparency. Since TCON 2023 is still ongoing, this will be the last part of our keynote of this keynote, our future. Honestly speaking, we don't, have we don't have many expectations. All of us are grown ups and have either school works or jobs to do. So really, the hardest part is to hold our ground. After we make sure we are still here, we would, we would keep learning, learn from mistakes, try new things, and hire, hire more talents to share our work a lot. Some key fields to work some key fields to work on include the player experiences and how to make more people know of those actually good mods. If you can get the right people to help on this, that would be magnificent. Oh, there's also the diversity issue. I think it has been asked again and again since day one in many different ways. When will support a fabric? Do you accept the fabric mods, quilt, fabric plugins? Data packs or even command blocks? The answer, the answer to this is we need much, much, much more time and resources if we ever want any of these options. Or you know what? We, we are eager to see a competitor. I mean, a competitor from the Chinese speaking scene. I'd like to end this, end this keynote with a Chinese proverb, which reads as follows. Blue is obtained from the indigo plant, but it's bluer than the plant itself. Ice is made from water, but it's colder than the water itself. I believe with our lessons and mistakes will be the stepping stone to will be the st stepping stone to success for our competitors. So thank you for listening to, listening to this prolonged keynote. Feel free to ask any remaining questions now. Thank you. Thank you. Let me check. Uh, well, it's very, well, it's very late, and we don't, and the conveyor belt doesn't have any books on it. So I will just wait. I will just wait for a while. Yeah, yeah. One of the reasons I would like to do this keynote is to have some uh, introductory, introductory call, introductory talk with uh, blanket upon, blanket upon people, so that we can, so that we can actually learn something from, learn something from it, and uh, hopefully. Blanket can also learn something from us as well. Um, how Blanket can handle this many players without a sharding? Uh, that's a question. I believe that's a question. It's better to leave to Blanket upon people. <clears throat> 
Uh, I think so. We can call. We can already call it. Or we can already call it today. Sorry for sting, sting your lead.